Today I'll teach you how to use HTML dot NT forgery token in ASP dot net MVC. So let's start inside the models folder. So first I'm creating a model class. Now I'll click on add. You can see I have created a class person model. Here I'll be creating some properties. So the very first property is person ID, which is an integer property. The second property is name, which is a string property. The third property is gender, which is also a string property. The last and the fourth property is city, which is a string property again. So with this, our model class is complete. Now let's move to the home controller. So this is a controller index action result method. Let's move to the view. And the very first line is defined as the person model class, which means the person model class will be the model for this view. Now I'm creating a form using MVC HTML helper method. I'm making use of begin form method. It accepts three parameters. The first one is name of the action result method, which is index. The second one is name of the controller, which is home. And the third one is the type of call. In this scenario, it is a post call. Now here I am creating the anti forgery token using the HTML helper classes. The anti forgery token function creates an HTML hidden field with the token value. Now I am adding HTML table and within the HTML table I will place my fields. So the very first field is person ID and in order to create a text box for this particular field, I am making use of text box for helper method of the HTML helper class of MVC. Here I am making use of lambda expression and I am pointing it to the person ID property of the person model class. So this way I am informing MVC that this particular text box will set the value inside the person ID of the person model class. So in similar way for name field also. I'll create a text box and bind it to the name property. Now for the third field gender, I'll be making use of a drop down list field. And hence I'll be making use of drop down list for method of the HTML helper class. Here in similar way, like the text box for function, I'll have to bind the property and then I'll have to add the list items of the drop down list. So for adding the list items, I'll be making use of a generic list collection. So as you can see, I have created a generic list of select list item class and in that I'm adding two objects. The first object is for the first option, which is mail. The text I am setting as mail and the value I am setting as m. In similar way, for the second option, I am setting the text as female and the value as f. Now, the third parameter of the drop down list for function is the default value. So, I am setting the default value as please select. Now, finally, I'm moving on to the last property city. For city, I'll be adding a text box. Again, I'll be making use of text box for function. And in similar way, I'll be binding the city text box with the city property. Now I'm adding a submit button, which will be used to submit the form. I'm making use of input type equal to submit. So that's it. Now our form is completed. Now let's move to the home controller.
now i am creating an action result method inside the controller and i am passing the person model class object as parameter that means the values of the form will be received through the model object here i am creating variables to extract the values from the model class so that i can show you how to fetch values from the model class inside the action result method now a question will come into your mind that why a model class object is used and how this particular model class object will be filled with values when the form is submitted so the answer is that when we will create fields inside the form that time will bind the fields along with the model class properties for example if we create a text box for name it will be bound to the name property of the person model class this particular method will handle the post call that is when a particular form is submitted using a submit button the values will be received by this particular method and hence it is marked with http post attribute finally i'll add a attribute validate nt forgery token to the method this particular attribute will make sure that this particular action result method validates the anti forgery token so that's it so with this we are done here i am adding a breakpoint in order to show you the values now let's run the code so the form is now displaying let me add some values i am adding the person id name i am selecting the gender then city finally i am clicking the button as you can see the form values have been submitted and received through the model class object in the quick watch window you can clearly see the values which we had entered in the form so with this we come to the end of this video today we learned how to use anti forgery token in asp.net mvc Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon goodbye